So we're gonna be checking out the Vidoc. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it earlier because I needed a new chair. Uh, this is not a new one. I still need to buy it, but uh, yeah, that's I was pretty busy in the morning. But hopefully, you guys like the video. Uh, if you guys want to watch the Vidoc without my, without me interrupting, because I will be doing that a lot, I'll have it in the description below. But yeah, let me know what you guys think, and let's just get right into it. I know what you're wondering. What is true, and what is false? The Witch Queen is an unsettling mystery. <laughs> our biggest foe, Sabathun, has our grandest tool, the light. It's paying off narrative threads that we planted way back in Destiny 1. I'm here to protect humanity. How do we stop this? The stakes in the universe are rising, and it's the greatest challenge that we've ever faced. We're shedding that dogma of light equals good, darkness equals bad. We're really entering the mists and trying to discern what's in front of us and what's lurking just underneath the surface. What is your truth now? There are a lot of bombshells in the Witch Queen narrative. And that's just scratching the surface of what we're going to get into this year. That looks super fucking cool. Okay, all right, let's get it. Witch Queen and Season of the Risen is chapter one and the beginning of the end for the Light and Darkness saga. We're really, really getting to the core of what it means to be a guardian. We are looking at and asking big questions about the light and darkness. We have a big bad that we've been anticipating for a really long time coming back in the, in the form of Savathun. Savathun's had a hand in most of the major conflicts that we've been involved with. We've heard about Sabathian for years and just bits and pieces, and then like you see it slowly building over seasons until we come to this huge critical point. Sabathian's no longer just someone you hear about. She's not just interfering in little ways. She's now ready to take center stage. Sight. One, two, three. Sabathian, she's larger than life. We wanted to make her feel imposing and very regal and dancing through motion in some way. Light offers us a fresh start. She's yeah. very manipulative. She is very ethereal, but she also has like that creepiness to her as well. She promised she'd help us out with this pyramid ship problem that's coming our way. But the reality of the situation is Sabathun is only on Sabathun's side. We've outlived our purpose, and it is to Sabathun's benefit to wipe us off that chessboard. She's lived among us. She has played us for fools. She knows us inside and out. And she's been a step ahead of us, like, the whole way. So how do you beat someone like that? It isn't too late. You can still be forgiven. Be careful. I'll, I'll hold, hold you, you to it. it. In order to beat Sabathun, you need to understand Sabathun. Her throne world is a manifestation of Savathun's own personality, which is in Witch Queen going through a transformation through the light. She has these areas that she's kind of trying to shun and push away. For the old hive areas, it's much more atmospheric. It's very dense. It's very claustrophobic. It's spooky. Then when you make your way into the Lucent hive area, it's a lot more open and broad. It's definitely brighter. It's definitely more lively. We want people to look at it like an impressionist painting, something that's very pretty from far away, but as you get closer, it's not really what it seems. It's, it's very unsettling. You're looking at shapes, you're looking at these things within the world, and you're not entirely sure what they are, and you have to get close and you have to investigate. What's really gonna be exciting for players is that they're gonna get to play that part of psychic detective, trying to solve the many mysteries of the throne world. Witch Queen campaign, I think, is probably the most ambitious campaign we've made in a very long time. We're building the Definitively Destiny campaign, so leaning into the journey you can find in exotic missions or uh, the mechanics you might find in a dungeon. You have to kind of think your way through. You have to figure out, like, hey, what do I need to do next in order to get to the end of this? We've got Sabathun, right, the Queen of Lies, so this campaign is full of surprises. Sabathun has all these abilities, and you got to make sure that all of the been. abilities of the has. bosses would be something worthy of her. And as I kept thinking about this, you know, I felt like I was really becoming Sabathun. We've also added... Okay. This is the map. 
Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Fluorescent canal, enclave. Uh, this is the classic Destiny Two campaign difficult to be or difficulty to be enjoyed alone with, or with a fire We've team? You'll face harder missions and stronger combatants. Recommended for experienced players with a broad arsenal to draw upon. Uh, what was that light dis difference? Recommended We've power. Recommended the, power. The okay. Difficulty, which is Ooh, look at them. Okay. This does look cool. I appreciate this. This is super cool. It's called Become Legend. Look at that fucking... Yo! We've also added the legendary difficulty. That fucker looks cool. This this does look super dope, though. See, which is called Become Legend. It's not for the faint of heart. It's going to be loaded with these moments that are going to be frustrating, almost like teeth gnashing. But when you get through those encounters, you're going to feel like really accomplished. Double rewards. Yeah. As people who are... Double rewards. So uh, that could be good or bad. Worked on raids and dungeons before. Being able to broaden that experience for any kind of player who comes in is really important. If the Witch Queen is the psychic detective fantasy and journey, then Season of the Risen is that same detective throwing on their flak jacket and defending Earth from the Hive Guardians and the Lucent Hive and Sabathun herself. When Sabathun shows up on our doorstep with the light, the first person to lend us help is Keitel. You want us to hit them. I need us to hit them. She's got this light suppressing oh. technology that the Cabal were using in Season of the Chosen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait suppressing a minute. technology that the Cabal were using in Season. Huh. I'm guessing that's the Season of the... Of the what, what was it called? Season of the illuminated i don't remember what it's called that looks i wonder why the helmet's red then of the chosen and now she's going to help us use that against the lucid hive when you're working with kaya tall she has a different approach kaya tall it's not about asking questions kaya tall wait hold on let's not just like skirt that like that didn't just happen sky kaya tall Kai et al. I guess it makes sense, but like, Keitel. It's about getting in there and extracting. We don't really understand what happened when Sabathun actually was able to take the light. And so the campaign in Season of the Risen in many ways is about that Wait story. Guardian what light. the fuck was that? We don't really understand what happened when Sabathun actually was able to take the light. And so the campaign in Season of the that looks like a super prison in many ways is about that story. Guardians need to stop Savathun's advance beyond the throne world. And Savathun looks, poses looks good. an existential threat I'm pretty to mean. everyone because she basically has an undead army. In fighting the Lucent Brood, this isn't our first time in the game fighting other light bearers, but it is the first time that we'll be facing other light bearers that have much more relentless motives. When you look at these Hive Guardians and when they do their abilities, you immediately make that connection like, oh, they are using my powers against me. As soon as we see the knight pop its super and it has two shields, you immediately are like, oh yeah, I see that connection. And then it's like, <laughs> and then you're like, it hits you with those things and then you're, you're dead. And it's just a, an amazing experience. The Guardians themselves kind of feel like a fire team that you're fighting against. They got every class represented. The Acolyte, when that character casts, does very similar thing as the player, like. The I can't do that. What are you talking about? The sparks go out. It's ready to go. If you're not smart about it, if you're not paying attention, you are essentially going to have to play that fight over again. If you're successful in taking down one of these hive units that are wielding the light, you actually have to go up and kill their ghost. That was like one of my favorite things that we were able to do in this game is just that moment where you crush the ghost. It's kind of this moral dilemma. Ooh. <laughs> The mm -hmm. fact that the ghost has an actual, like, screaming sound is actually pretty metal. Crush the ghost. It's kind of this oh. moral dilemma. Why is there a moral dilemma? A ghost is your companion, and now suddenly you have one in your hand, and you're about to crush it. The first time it happens, you're, like, looking at your hand like, I can't believe what I've just done. Am I doing this? Should I be doing this? I have a ghost. Yeah, like, exactly. What, what, like, what is, is this going? mean? <laughs> 
I just don't see it as a dilemma though. It's like our moral dilemma. It's like, oh my god, this is a ghost. Like, yeah, but it's a ghost of your enemy. Like, I don't know. I don't see it like that. But or they're just trying Sonic to hype it up. Or Lucian Brood are the most dangerous enemies we've faced so far, and so we're going to need better, more powerful weapons and tools to fight against that threat. We did a bunch of work early on looking at various different types of weapons we could add to the sandbox. We wanted to introduce a special weapon archetype that was effective more at a middle range, but also had these kind of additional roles associated with it. The glaive is a projectile weapon, and it is a shield, and it's a melee weapon. We wanted to keep that experience in first person. It has an immediacy that you don't really get when you're using a sword because the camera is so much further back. Because this is also a projectile weapon with a slower moving projectile, the onus of skill on aiming these weapons is about leading and compensating for the speed of the projectile and anticipating that. If you're in a really difficult encounter and one of your teammates dies somewhere out in the open where you normally wouldn't be able to get to them, you can bring that shield up and actually get the revive and then fall back. Glaives originate with Savathun trying to steal an extremely powerful weapon for her own use, and players will use the weapon crafting recipes that they find throughout the campaign in order to reconstruct this incredibly powerful and incredibly ancient weapon. When you put together your glaive in the campaign, you just get a taste that that's what you want to do for the rest of the weapons that you get. Weapon crafting lets you target a specific role and go and build that, and you know how long it's going to take you to get there, and you get exactly the thing that you want. I really want to see. see what people do with it and like the feedback that we're going to get and people sharing all of the things that they're doing with that new system. Your crew. Wait a minute. That they're doing. That's Kill Clip. Oh, wow. That is Kill Clip on the on the glaive. With that okay. new system. You're creating your guardian and you want to be able to shape your guardian into what you want them to be. And this gives us a great opportunity to continue to do that. This is a really big season for weapons in particular. We've got eight yeah. brand new exotics. That looks like it's going to be fun. Exotic submachine gun. This Osteo is Osteo something Strega. which Guardians have made, but it's modeled after weapons of sorrow, like Thorn and Touch of Malice. Fires swarms of tiny homing projectiles that land on a target and then explode in this poison burst. We have an exotic machine gun where the whole idea is be the Colossus. You can launch a barrage. Oh shit, it is ca cabal themed. It's a comical amount of projectiles on the screen. We're doing an exotic glaive for each class this time, and the exotic perks tie deeply into the mechanics of the classes. Too bad hunters really suck. Really cool additions to build crafting. We've yeah. got, you know, the usual suite of raid okay. weapons, destination, activity, seasonal. I recounted up this morning, I think. Wait a minute. We've got, Let's you see. know, the usual suite of raid weapons. <laughs> All right, that's the world drop weapons. Destination the, activities. That's the, I think, this one is a playlist weapon. I don't, these might be the seasonal weapons, actually, because they look very Cabal-themed. Seasonal, a recount. Uh, Cabal. Oh, no. This weapon's going to be back. But this morning, I, th I think it's about 50 new weapons. You're gonna have two new exotic armor. So he says 52 new weapons. I saw a lot of reused weapons right there, my guy. I'm just saying, uh, a lot of reskins. Just saying. Uh, I don't wanna. I don't wanna throw shade, cause you know. I'm just saying. Marks for I'm each class, saying. totaling six: one stasis, one non-stasis. The Titan stasis exotic. Cast your barricade, and instead of you know this traveler's light and the rally barricade, you create a giant wall of ice. Even though this thing is massive, you still get all the benefits of rally barricade. Warlock oh. void exotic. We called them the devouring rift legs because we wanted empowering rift to feel like it had a place in endgame content the way that healing rift does. Empowering rift doesn't heal you. Well, what if it did? Oh, that must be the seasonal armor. That's that's probably what that is, because it's very, very cabal themed, and we already know that like the next season is going to be cabal themed, which is pretty funny considering this or Beyond Light's rotation. The first season was cabal themed. That oh no, it wasn't. It the first, the first after that one. Never mind. Ignore me. Um, 
So their empowered rift actually heals them. That's going to be wild. In season 16, you're going to see a massive revamp to the void subclass system. No hunter? Okay, that's cool. Whatever. I don't want to see anything classes. anyways. This is a huge update and will allow players to build craft in ways that they... Oh shit! They're actually show well, right. Let's see. Let's see. I'm, I'm so sorry, but I gotta. I gotta check it out. All three classes. Uh, this is a huge no. update and will allow players to build craft and wait. No, no, I did it wrong. All right. So if melee final blows grant grenade energy. Never. Your lingering grenade effects vortex grenade void wall and has increased duration. Done okay, before. dope. Final blows when surrounded by combatants grant super energy. One of the energy. things we wanted to do yeah. is create a core set of verbs like we did with stay. Chaos Accelerant. Uh, hold to recharge your grenade, making it deadlier and more effective. Vortex Grenade. Uh, la. Oh. Creates an additional seeker. Has some, some munitions tracked to nearby. Really see short range. Stasis. This is for Warlock, obviously. No, that's. I think that's a Titan. No, this is Warlock. I can see the Rift, and it says Rift. Child of the Old Gods, cast your Rift to create a Void Soul. When you're damage, <clears throat> when you damage target with a weapon, your Void Soul flies to them and drains them, and doing damage and weakening them. When a target is being drained, you are granted grenade and melee energy. <laughs> if running health Rift or or health, if running empowering Rift. De defeating a target who is being drained by your void grants class ability energy. Anyone can run suppressors now. What the I think fuck? That's pretty Anyone can run suppressors? Let's fucking go. Fuck you, Titans. You guys aren't the only ones that have that cool shit. Thing. I'm going to be running suppressor yeah. grenade oh, yeah. We wanted you to feel like you were the energy vampire. Feel like you were the night stalker. Feel like you were that. That was a cool animation, bro. Protector, that big sentinel titan. So you're gonna. You can throw your shield. <laughs> See things like Bastion, the new titan aspect, where you take your big old sentinel shield, slam it into the ground, and create this void barricade that's gonna apply overshield to you and your buddies. My favorite. favorite aspect is probably Child of the Old Gods. As this warlock controlling space and time, I'm able to rip a hole into another dimension and then pull out this little like sentient black hole. Whenever I target an enemy, my little black hole buddy is gonna fly over there and start draining their life force. Wait a minute, the void wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me that it's not just like, oh yeah, it's just one guy. It's like a, like a chain? So oh, let's you're gonna see, see things like Bro, it, their life. so it's and legitimately black like Whenever the black hole just goes enemy, at them. My little black hole buddy is gonna fly over there. Bro, you're telling me that <sighs> and start draining their life force. Wild, so the absolutely wild. Is really setting the stage for how we're thinking about updating the subclasses for the rest of the year. We're gonna extend this philosophy to solar and arc. Solar obviously is going to be about burning, but there's this other component to solar, and that's healing. Arc. Arc is all about chaining. It's all about lightning, direct attacks, quickness. We're gonna take the fantasies that you know and love today. We're gonna embellish them. So what you'll see is like all of the new abilities. Okay. Um... Arc, solar, obviously is gonna be about burning, but there's this other component to solar and that's healing. Arc. Arc is all about chaining. It's all about lightning, direct attacks, quickness. We're going to take the fantasies that you know and love today. We're going to embellish them. Okay, so my problem with this, it better be like an additive thing. Additive thing? Like, oh, if you have this on, then that means you can do that. If this is just our melee invis, I'm going to be fucking upset because now I have to do... I have to do an extra step to go invisible where right now I just throw it on the fucking floor and I'm invisible. Um, again, if this is like a, like a shatter dive where you actually have to turn that on, that's fine. But if... So what you'll see is like all of the new abilities, all the new actions you take, reinforce that to the core. Pretty excited about it.
Witch Queen is very much the culmination of the last six to seven years of just destiny all together. And really, this is starting the road to the final showdown. But things aren't necessarily just dark and light anymore. There's a lot more nuance in the game. It's going to be a real fight. Players have something that they're really going to be challenged by. I can't wait for everyone to find out what's been going on with Sabathun. Like, I'm excited. <laughs> you guardians are so clever. Aren't you? <laughs> From the drone world to the campaign to the customizable build crafting, it all comes together to make Destiny feel really new and fresh. We've got more Destiny coming this year than any other year before. It's one of the most ambitious releases we've ever put together, and the team is firing on all cylinders. <sighs> Tell me, Guardian, what do you think you're going to do? That's it. That's the, uh... Okay, so I think the only thing that kind of like irked me was the hunter shatter dive smoke bomb thing. This little like sentient black like, hole. Whenever again, today, I don't. We're gonna. Let me just turn this off. I don't mind if it's like you have to activate it and then it gives you like other b bonuses. That'd be cool because essentially this I do see this being useful. Like if you're in the air and you have your ability up. God forbid, oh my god, god forbid this is like actually Shatter Dive and you can actually activate it more than once and it's not attached to your melee. I would actually lose my mind a little uh, because it'd be so, so useful at that point because invisibility is like really the only survivability hunters have. So more of it, I will never say no to. I know people would bitch about it like, oh, it's OP in, in PvP even though like, no, like the most... You'll be as like, oh, I missed you for like a second and then you'll kill them still. So I don't know. That's cool. Uh, I'm happy that, you know, Titans and Warlocks got all this cool shit and Hunters, we didn't see anything because obviously why would you show us anything? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it's always, it's a Vidoc. Vidocs are always like, this is going to be the best year of all time. Like, look at, look at, look at the uh, Beyond Lights Vidoc. The Vidoc was exactly the same thing. And ask some people and they'll tell you that for them, like, Beyond Light was weak as fuck. Personally, I would agree with that. I think, uh, I think Beyond Light was very weak. Uh, I don't know. I just, uh, we'll see how it goes. I can't really say this was good or bad. I mean, they showed us a lot of stuff. Uh, and they had a lot of jargon like, uh, this is, this has been called, this has been like six years in the making or whatever they said. And it's like, obviously like, it's just, I don't know. It's, I, I, I do apologize if I sound a little bit negative about it, but at this point, Vidocs are just not reliable sources of information for me. Uh, at least when it comes to like how the season's actually going to be. Cause they're saying like, you guys have so much this season, this, this year for destiny Two, And that's like. Uh, if it's like this year, then I guess like it will be, it'll, it will be better off than last time. So like, I don't know. I just want to see what this is up about. Cause like, this is going to be the smallest expansion we've gotten so far, apparently. And the fact that this dude's like, oh yeah, you have, we have like 50 something odd new weapons. And I'm like, I mean, I saw a lot of reskins in there, but okay, dog, shoot your shot. Um, it's. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on my social media, I'll links in the description below. I I cannot wait until I see more of the Hunter stuff, just because I'm a Hunter main. But the Titan and Warlock stuff did look really cool. And I'm actually very curious how they're going to implement a lot of this stuff in PvP, because uh, there's a lot of it where I'm just kind of like, this would kind of break PvP, bro. <laughs> I'm looking at you, child of, child of the Old Gods, or whatever it's called. That one just seems stupid, but yeah, be safe and I'll see you guys later.